O'Halloran and welcome to Over 50 So What. This show is all about making the most of your later years. We often have inspiring people on the show and today we're having some more fun with the amazing Pink Dragons, the Breast Cancer Survivor Dragon Boat Team and we're going to see some clips from the movie. This year, breast cancer teams from 30 countries met in New Zealand for the Dragon Boat Festival. Some inspiring stuff. Now we know it's important to keep moving as we age, so please join us in the fun five minute fitness segment. And today we're chatting about being active in the garden or starting your own little urban farm in the courtyard or on the balcony. We chat with Perry Cho. You may not be aware of it, but there's an international movement for Dragon Boat breast cancer survivors. It was inspired by the research done by Canadian Don McKenzie, a sports medicine specialist. There are multiple groups around Australia and New Zealand. Today we're going to meet some of the pinkies, the pink dragons in Auckland, New Zealand. And we're going to see some clips from the movie, The Pinkies Are back. Hi Jules and Caroline, welcome to Over 50 So What? Hi. Hi. Well for all those people watching that don't really know anything about dragon boat racing, can you just outline you know, how many people in a team, there's a, like a caller and a sweeper and what how, what is a dragon boat race? It's 20 paddlers, so 10 on each side, um, trying to paddle at the same time. <laughs> helps in the same direction the same as well direction, which yeah. really helps <laughs> um you have a caller up the front yelling at us and you have a sweep at the back who is steering the boat and, and yelling at us to, yeah and yelling at us <laughs> sweep. Yeah. i'm training to be a sweep you're training to be a sweep are you it's interesting i've fallen off once that was that was fun it was a spectacular <laughs> climb back on the boat though i have to say it was yeah. really really good <laughs> yeah it's just everybody working as a team and trying to bring the boat, a boat forward and win Welcome to Pink Dragons. Ooh. There's two things that bring us together. The first one is because we like each other. You make friends for life. The second one's dragon boat. <laughs> On the water and off, we're a family. Hello. I didn't put your beer in the fridge. <gasps> I've been too busy. Feels like your world's falling apart. Um, I guess there are ways you can deal with it and you know, for breast cancer survivors, dragon boat can, is a really good way because you get on the water and empty your brain and it's great. Oh, there's a good benefit to emptying your brain from time to time, isn't there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what are the other benefits that you've noticed from being involved in dragon boat racing? Well, I've got muscles <laughs> I never <laughs> thought I would have and quite sort of straight shoulders, which is really nice. Mm. Core body strength, um, you know, all of those things. Um you know, my boobs are not sagging <laughs> very much. <laughs> that could be the, you know, the boob lift. Um, so Jules, what do you think are some of the other benefits? I think it's, it's just great being around women who have gone through the exact same thing that you have. I mean, everybody's, yeah. everybody's story is different. Um, everybody's experience is different, but we've all gone through the same thing. Um, so it's great, you know, if you want to, you can vent and, you know, someone can say, I know how you feel because they do. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just great. I think the the one thing that, I mean, cancer is the, the criteria that brings us all together. Um, but once we get in the boat, it's kind of like that's not our mm. common card. You know, mm -hmm. there's all sorts of other things that kind of draw us together. And we're, we're actually, a lot of us are friends off the water as well. Mm. In fact, most of us are friends off the water. Mm. It's, it's like a family, another yeah. family. So everyone's got your back. If you're in, you know, if, if if something's going on, someone will be able to help. Um, so it's 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 amazing. For someone who's never done drag boat racing, and Caroline, you mentioned you started from zero fitness. Maybe there's you know some other breast cancer survivor out there that wants to have a go, but they've got zero fitness and they've never even done drag and boat racing before. What would you suggest? Even if you've got no kind of training behind you at all you don't do any kind of fitness or whatever you can still get in the boat mm -hmm. it will take you a few weeks to get paddle fit but you will get fit mm -hmm. but obviously if you're doing external kind of exercise regime as well then it's a lot easier 
But um, the key to it is just being able to keep in time. Mm. You know, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, not strong in the beginning. Just keeping in time with everybody else is the key thing. Mm. The strength um, will come. Yeah, the strength will build over time. Mm. So just, you know, if you can keep a beat, then you should be good. Just get in a boat and try it. So you can just get in and try it. You don't have yeah. to do races or anything, do you? No. So we, we have give it a go days, which I'm sure most of the clubs do as well, um, where you can just literally go down and sit in a boat and try it out. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. But having one go and making up your mind is pretty, you know, that's pretty hard mm -hmm. because once you get into the rhythm of it and and kind of the idea of it, it's easy to keep going. And as you build up your strength and you kind of challenge yourself a little bit more, you kind of keep going. So um, in, in the Pink Dragons, we've got um, a lot of the team are Auckland reps and a, a lot of the team have put their names forward to become New Zealand Black Dragons as well. So there is, there's a whole pathway. You can go, you can turn up and just train and, and use it as your fitness thing, or you can push yourself and go kind of to the next level. I was in Australia last August and I managed to meet up with a team from Maruya and um, they were all from various parts of New South Wales, all training together. So up and down the coast, and they'd all come down to Maruya to train. And I was allowed to get on the boat with them, which was fabulous, go up the Maruya River. Um, and those guys were going to the Pan Pacific Masters Games. Oh, so there's actually international um, um, regattas or yeah. competitions. Right. Some of the breast cancer teams um, have been over to New Zealand for our national events. It always makes me laugh, but Miss a bit of titty, I always get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, came over to one of our nationals a few years ago. Yeah, there is a bit of international competition and obviously the, the world competitions um, are pretty fierce and there'll be teams from Australia and New Zealand and everywhere else in the world going as well. So where's the, the next comp or the next regatta? Where's that going to be? We've got regionals coming up at the end of March, which will be held here in Auckland. Then we've got nationals, which will be held down in Waikato at Lake Karapiro. Um, and then we have the International Breast Cancer Paddlers Commission um, regatta, which is a worldwide regatta in um, the Waikato at Lake Karapiro in, in April as well. Currently, there's about 3,000 breast cancer paddlers mm. from all over the world coming down to New Zealand. It's going to be massive yeah. um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We've got worlds to compete at as well in Thailand in, in August. Let's have a good race, ladies. Let's have a good race. Let's see what you girls can do. Easy, let it drift. Lock in. Just do your job and follow the first four. Take us forward, three strokes, set them up. One, go, one, 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 four, go! One more, yep. Get ready, girls. Get ready, get ready. Get ready, Thank you. Get ready. Get ready. In. I walked down the pier and I had this overwhelming surge of emotion. I couldn't believe that every one of those women was the same as me. for me in the 70s, love my disco. So we're gonna start just with a simple step, clap. Can you remember some of the moves from uh, Saturday Night Fever? Because we're gonna be doing them.
This is just your get into the mood. Loosen up. Come on, on your feet, on your feet. Otherwise you can follow Fabulous Faye. All right, now we're going to do a hitchhiker. We go hitchhike, stick that thumb out. You got it? What's this one called? Hitchhiker. What's it called? Hitchhiker. You got it, haven't you? Because we're going to do it fast. Ready? Fast. You can do a little swivel with your feet at the same time. Now we're going to do two slow, four quick. Slow, slow. One, two, three, four. Slow, slow. One, two, three, four. And slow, slow. One, two, three, four. You should recognize this move now. Unless it's been 30 years since you've seen the movie. Okay, hold it there. Got a little knee bend, knee bend. And we're gonna point the finger in the air. The disco point. And we go up, down, down, down. That's it. See, you're getting these little uh, plies or squats in or knee bends at the same time. Let's try the other side. Up. Really point up to the clouds or the ceiling. Hold it there again. Other side. And change. Up. This is the last time on this side. Okay, hold it there. We're going to take two steps to the side. And we go step together, step, tap, step together, step, tap, step together, step, tap. That's it. Now, put on the disco. <laughs> Faye's cracking up over there. This is really good for someone like me who broke their arm. Keep it going. Okay, back to the step clap. Okay, can you remember? Hitchhiker. Too slow, fall quick, slow, slow. Quick, 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 slow, slow. Quick, 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 slow. That's it. They used to call me the disco queen. I think Faye's going the opposite way. But that's okay, she's still doing it. Just like you. Keep doing it. Doesn't matter if you go the wrong way, do the wrong move. Just keep moving. Okay, let's do the finger point. Up. With a bend. That's it. We got it. Ready? Oh my goodness, that went fast. Are you ready to do the pose? Whoa. Hi everyone, welcome to The Bucket List. Previously, we've spoken to Perry Cho about just how easy it is to grow your own fruit and veggies in your backyard, on a rooftop, in an apartment, or in a local community garden. And today we're talking with Perry about the 
food cube system and biofilter and just how easy it is to set up these great little urban farms all around the neighbourhood. Hi Perry, welcome back. We're in our, your beautiful garden again. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Now, we did talk previously about how easy it is you can put just one cube or two cubes in your own garden. Uh, just tell us, how do these food cubes work and why are they so easy? Well, they're easy because it, it, it just comes in a plastic container and um, you, you can go to the web page and there's a video to show you how to set up these systems. So it basically, it has a tank below the cubes and it's got a plate uh, over it and it stores about 100 litres of water and it's got little four, about 16 weeks going into the water and what it does is that um, it, it, all you need to do is buy a potting mix from, from any uh, nurseries and you, you put the potting mix into, into the top of the cubes and the water gets absorbed through the root system and, and up into the plant and, and the good thing about biofilter cubes is that you're never too wet and you're never too dry. And, and, and it uses 50% less water than any other growing medium system. And it's an Australian design too. I mean, Wicking, Wicking system is an Australian, Australian innovation and Wicking uh, biofilter cubes is an Australian Melbourne-based design as well. Yes, because someone like myself, I'm like, well, do I have to water it? Because I've killed so many plants over the years because I don't go out and regularly water. And I, this is a system that helps <laughs> eliminate some of that. Well, one of the best thing about this system is that the only way it loses water is through the leaves of the plant. The roots absorb the water from, from, from the wicking system. And you in, in summer, you only need to fill the tanks once a week and in winter, once a month. Now, the guy who des designed these cubes is such a brilliant guy in the sense that the cubes can be joined together. So if you have a flat area, you can put 100 cubes all joined together. And the, the, the way you water it is, you only f put the hose into one hole and it fills up all the entire tank. You can even use your down pipes from your, your house to, to, to fill the water as well. So it's, it's, it's a fantastic system. And, and, the, and, and this way it allows a lot of us older Australians to go on holidays. How good it is. You don't have to ring your mother-in-law or your, your <laughs> next door neighbor to come and water your plants when you're on holiday and worry about it. You can go away for up to a week. And in actual fact, I reckon you can stretch it to at least 10 days or 14 days without watering it. Uh, but I, I love to water it just to make sure uh, uh, once a week in, in, in summer and um, uh, once a month in winter. Uh, uh, as, for the, as for this year, with, with the wet weather we have, I didn't water it at, at all in winter because it, was, it has been so wet. And the, the point is, because it's raised beds and there's outlet pipes in, in, in the wicking system, it's never too wet. It's never too wet. Everybody is complaining about wet soil this, this winter and, and spring, and I haven't had wet soil because that's how good this system is. The, the, you've got to, it's never too wet or never too dry. So tell us, what sort of things are you growing in the food cube? Well, I mean, as you can see from my garden, I've, I've, got, I've got bok choy, uh, beans, capsicums, uh, eggplants, uh, tomatoes, chilies, spring onion, uh, iceberg lettuce, uh, corn, and, and even lemon grass and and it's something i've been trying to grow for 43 years and finally <laughs> i have achieved growing lemon grass i bought the the, the, the lemon grass from uh, uh, queensland and uh, i've got a greenhouse and and I, I i grow them and i've harvested my first lemon grass this year and my wife cooked beautiful curry with our own lemon grass after 43 years <laughs> i'm so thrilled with it you're so passionate about your garden and your produce you've actually got your own little greenhouse so you've combined the food cube with the greenhouse that's, that's right and you, you can see the, the lemon grass see how healthy it is in the back right at the back right hand corner yes see I, 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 it's a monster it is it is and, and I could never grow it as I, and, and it, it, it it's so healthy I just cannot believe that it's so healthy you can create your own microclimate I, I, I use 15 15 percent shade on the sides and I add more, more, more cloth on the top and I have 50% shade. So I have 
what we created, what I call a microclimate. Uh, the Australian sun is too hot and, and it seems to burn a lot of things. And if you have 50% shade on the top and 15% shade on the side, you absolutely can grow anything. So a lot of people are concerned, you know, because you get a couple of days at 40, 42 degrees and yes. all of a sudden everything's fried. Yes. So that obviously combats that. Exactly, exactly. And, 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 and if you want to get more elaborate, you buy more shade cloth and, and you just cover it over, 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 over it when the hot days comes around. It depends how extreme you want to get. Look, it, it's not difficult. I mean, like, 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 like I, I, I am, I am extreme, and so, so you're talking to the wrong person to a certain ex extent. But generally, it, 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 it's, it's as simple as that. It, it, there's nothing complicated about this system because anything can be purchased online nowadays, and, and, and the net system works really well. You can buy clips, you can buy nets of different density, and, 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 and it, it's fantastic. What I like about growing vegetables is that. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. And, and as, so I, as I said to you, it might sound that growing vegetables is difficult. It's not difficult. It's how much you want to put in it and how much you want to get out of it. If you don't want to put a lot into it, that's fine. It'll still, it'll still grow. It depends how far you want to go. Uh, I'm just the sort of guy that I was brought up by my, my, my father. He always said to me, Perry, if you want to do something, make sure you do it properly. Otherwise, don't bother. <laughs> so that's the mentality I was brought up in, with. But you can just have fun in the garden. Oh my word, absolutely, absolutely. You, you, can, you, you can just, most, most vegetables just grow. It's, it's very easy, very easy. As I said to you, I, I don't have to do much because, because the fact that I buy potting mix for my uh, wicking beds is that I don't have weeds. I don't, with nets, I don't have weeds, I don't have insects. So really, apart from planting the, 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 uh, uh, the vegetables, I really don't have much to do. I uh, love that bit where you said you don't have weeds, because everyone automatically thinks I'm going to be weeding all the time. And... Well, I had very bad, bad experience when I was growing flowers. In trying to help the scout group, I bought some sheep manure and I planted it in the garden. Did I get thistles? <laughs> I got thistles and thistles and thistles. It's, it grew everywhere. So I've learned my lesson. I don't use, I try not to use fresh manure. Awesome. Well, thank you for letting us know about these food cubes and how easy it is and you can get started in your rooftop and your backyard. You can talk to the council, get a community guard going and just go and enjoy being mm. in nature. And, and the other thing I might, I might say, add to it too, the, 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 the community gardens. A lot of cities and towns have community gardens. And what better way to, to encourage our young kids to, to, to grow vegetables in community gardens using cubes because the kids love it. It's just the right height for the kids too. Perfect height. <laughs> All right, beautiful. Thanks a lot, Perry. We'll chat again. Pleasure. Now look at this beautiful, healthy, organic produce just growing, just pulled out right this minute, put into the basket. A very impressive display of veggies that can be grown by our wonderful Perry. Happy gardening everyone. There's nothing like eating veggies or fruit fresh from the garden. I recently tasted some apples straight from the orchard and they were just spectacular. For more information on Food Cube by Biofilter or Dragon Boat Racing for Breast Cancer Survivors, just hop on our website carolahalloran.com. We look forward to chatting with you on Facebook, YouTube or Insta. Over 50, so what? Keep having fun and please send us all your stories. We love to hear from you. I'm Carol, over 50, so what? See you soon. Thanks for watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and then you'll never miss an episode. Jump on Facebook, join our group, get in on the fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. I'm Carol, over 50, so what?